check this out, Trap. So, you know, <clears throat> my favorite rappers always say they don't write no more. What are you doing? And they normally just put all their lyrics on their phone. And I'm you got a show, bro. What? I'm trying to get this jingle straight for this Pazano's read, man. Jingle? We don't. What are you talking about a jingle? I mean, we need something new. No, we don't. We're sticking to the script, okay? More pizza, less dough. Get a medium one top. Don't look at me like that. Medium one topping pizza, five ninety nine. Okay. Go online with promo code five nine nine pizza at paisanospizza.com. That's five nine nine pizza at paisanospizza.com. We don't need no damn jingle. Just go get the pizza. I got that right from you. It's a sell of my show. Former through your ball game. Number eighty nine. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right. Hot mic on the left. Every single week is a lyrical fact. Uh, uh, check, 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 Santana Moss Show Podcast, live from Matchbox in one loader! Yes, sir! Woo, 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 woo. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss, and another Moss <laughs> is in the house, Sonoris Moss, give it up for Sonoris Moss. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, baby. Shout outs to Lloyd also. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say I am now an honorary Moss brother also. <laughs> Shout outs to me for that. Thank you. They adopted me. I'm very happy. My dog. I'm you very already happy. know. <laughs> it's an honor to have hey, you man. here. It's you and pleasure. I have met over Skype several times. Yeah, for sure. So it's good now to have you in the flesh. What have you been doing since your playing career? Because people don't know, you were drafted by the Giants. You were a second round pick, right? Yes. Played there. Got a Super Bowl ring. Mm-hmm. Congrats. I know it's the Giants. We yeah. can clap. It's we okay. Got a little bit of, don't show your right. face, though. Please don't show your right. face. What have you been doing since your playing career has been over? Oh, man. So um, I stopped playing, what, 2013? That okay. was my last year. I went to the CFL to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That was my last year playing. Um, after that, I ventured off to – I moved to Los Angeles, California, man. I've been in the entertainment industry since. Been doing some uh, some acting full time. Oh. Full time acting, man, and having some fun He's with that. He's always been an actor, though. So let me tell you a little something about some nurse. All right. And I don't know if he knows this, but I, I've always viewed him like Moss this. Moss Secrets. <laughs> you know, I'm going to jump in here real fast. Nor was one of those guys that if you didn't see him, you was going to see him. And I don't know if it's, a, you know, being the younger brother thing and knowing, like, look here, man, I'm going to get the show. And when the show is mine, it's mine. We go somewhere, and if... If he don't have the, your attention, he's going to get your attention. <laughs> Nori was going to find a way to make sure that the family members saw him, whether he was singing, dancing, doing something of some party. sort. So I'm going to jump in here real fast because basically you just jumped to it and said, hey, you know, since you've been you know, all done with football, you know, you've been out in Hollywood acting. That's mm-hmm. something that I can't say that I saw it in your future or saw it after, you know, your uh, pro days was over, but – was that your main goal when we was coming up? Because it seemed like to me, you was always a guy that I, you know, I used to get on you about it too, yeah. singing all the time. All I the hated time. it for some reason. <laughs> all the time. It's crazy. I got on him about all it. And now to this day, I'm Mr. He's R&B myself. all the time, <laughs> all right, bro. Listen, all the time. Like Santana would li- literally tell me to shut up. Because I was <laughs> singing around the house. I used to tell him, I used to tell him I shut was singing up. around the house all the time, you know? So, like, <laughs> either driving to school with my mom. My mom was singing. Yeah, my mom was You know, a, so we were blow. singing in the what house. What was you singing? R&B? Everything. Everything. Gospel, everything. R&B, wow. whatever you think of, we were singing. I, so. was, I would say Nori put me on Bones and Thug, Bone Thugs Thug. and Harmony. Like, he was the guy that kind of got me into certain, you know, artists that I wasn't into. Sure. I was all West Coast hip-hop, you right. know, and yeah. he was one of those guys when the box, we had the box back in those days. I remember yeah. the box. And he had to d- call in. We waiting for somebody to call in <laughs> for a video that we wanted to see. And Nuri like, man, you, hey man, you gotta when this video come on, this son come on, you need to, you need, you need yeah, to uh, check him out. Yeah. But no, honestly, I because my goal and my dream, and I'm pretty sure you know that being a younger brother of mine, and because I've always was pushing you and Lloyd right. to kind of follow me, but I was always about ball, you know. Uh, that was first and foremost. I, I I I recognized and realized early that this is my way out. You know, I hear a lot of guys say that now, but no, for real, this is my way out. I saw it early when we were staying in Liberty City, um, when I became a fan of football, and when we got a chance to move to Carroll City and I got a chance to play, right. I'm like, this is my ticket. So, you know, I tell stories time and time again about the days that 
Mom and daddy had to get y'all up to play ball. That's Who right. was getting y'all up? It was me. Was, yeah. You know what yep. I'm saying? Yep. I was Definitely. the guy getting them up. I was the guy saying, the lawyer couldn't make the weight. Come on, we're going to go out here and run. Right. We're going to run this park until you drop two pounds. Because Lloyd was always taller than us, you know? Right. And so he wasn't, you know, chunky back then, but he just was taller and bigger. Two or three pounds yeah. as an 80 pounder, you know, you got to lose that before you play. Right. And he would go out and have, play a light, have a lights out performance. So I've always questioned that because I don't ask you a lot of this stuff. So that's why I wanted you to give my listeners, you know, your intake of what you really wanted to do mm. as a kid. You know what I mean? Because mine was ball. What was your, your childhood dream? I mean, my thing was always entertainment. I mean, yeah. you, think about it, you think about it when we was younger. All I did was watch Kids Incorporated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. All I would do was sit around and watch TV, sing, dance, yep. Yep. perform. My grandmother, Lake Charlotte Moss, she would yep. always have me perform for her friends. Yeah. Wow. So I would do like little skits. I would do like Living Color, I mean Living Single. Right. No, Living Color. Yeah. Living Color skits, Fire Marshal Bill. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was. Let me show <laughs> like all, all of these different, all these different skits that I would see, yeah. my grandma would have me perform for her friends. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, do so that I would thing. do all this stuff. All that I would do, you know, the repair man, all yeah. of that, all of those <laughs> no, different was things. Off the chain. Like, wow. So I was always, I was always a performer, like yeah. I, the stuff that I wanted to do and the stuff that I was into. Right. So, growing up, having that in, in having that in me and doing it. Right. Once I got to like middle school, I started doing like a little more modeling. Remember, yeah. I got into modeling yeah. real, real heavy. I was in Sports Authority ads and Finish Line and all of that stuff. I knew that the dream was like possible for me to possibly to do that to do this. But also growing up. Santana, we going outside playing ball. Right. We're the fastest kids in the neighborhood. Football yeah. was an extension football of was an extension performing. of performing for me. So yeah. once I got on the park, my love was football. Yeah. Once I got off that park, my love was for the entertainment industry. Wow. So that kind of carried me into where I am now. You just brought up Marlon. I'm, I'm crazy. You know, I'm, I'm carrying this thing a little bit because I got my brother here. It's your brother. <laughs> and I want to be the one because it's, it's certain things that he's bringing up. And then, like I told you before on our last show, we don't get a chance to have these conversations. That's right. I don't know why, because I guess we just brothers and we talk about numerous he other said things. He had a lot lined you know, up for but you. But I had a lot of questions because I want to know. It, to me, it seemed like <laughs> I was always playing against you. Growing up, it was like on different teams. I'm yes. the big brother, right? And I want my younger brothers to be on my side, right? Yeah. Lloyd would easily come be on Tanner team, and Nori would go with the other guys. <laughs> was it something planned or saying, but or just the other guys like, hey man, we want your brother. We this is our opportunity to beat you. Was it something that you wanted to do, or it was just that was happening? Because you remember the, no, all yeah, the time was, we played Sam. It was, it was never anything that I wanted to do. I always wanted to be on the team with my brother. Right. Yeah. But we were so dominant together. Right. I mean, it you think unfair. about it. It's Santana. <laughs> it's myself. And then it's my youngest brother, Woo! Lloyd. All of us on the same park playing against these guys. They were like, no, nah, that's not fair. You take Lloyd, since right. he's little brother, right. and give us a north right. to make it equal. To you know, so even. that was always something like, yo, you take little brother. And little brother was good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take Sonoris. That made that even it out. So that was always that thing. Now, when you talked about going to the park and yeah. taking your brothers and keeping them away from a lot of stuff that was going yeah. on where y'all grew up in Miami at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. when he did that as an older brother, did you realize at the time what he was doing, that he was kind of helping protect you guys from that? Yeah, I definitely realized it. I mean, it was something like growing up in Liberty City, uh, we had an opportunity to see a lot of things that we probably shouldn't have saw at a very, very young right. age. Yeah. So once we made that move from being in Liberty City to now considered the, the middle class area of Miami Gardens, Carroll sure. City area, it was, we was aware of our surroundings. We was aware of what was going on around us, the things that was taking place, the drugs, the crime, et cetera. So being outside, we knew that I can't go past this certain, you know, this point, certain area sure. because this is what happens. And having my older brother there like, hey, don't go there. We're going to go outside, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then we go in the house. Sometimes we were defiant, and we wanted to stay out a little longer, mm, or we right. wanted to go to other neighborhoods, but he made sure that we stayed in line, man. I appreciate him for that. You know, because um, me and you have more of these talks, and I tell you the stories, and I'm pretty sure folks that hear me on other shows, um, it was crazy because I share stories more about the guys, and they probably don't even know I remember this. Right. It was guys that I considered friends. They was probably more... Uh, there was guys I knew in the neighborhood. Sure. And I remember at one point in time, probably it was like 10th graders in high school, a big group of these guys all went to prison. Damn. They all went to prison at one, one time. And young it was a game. They was, it was, we all young, 10th graders. Probably one or two guys, probably a junior or a senior. But mm. it was all 10, it was all guys that I remember going and playing with at the park. And when my brothers would hit that field, 
I break off and they make jokes and they like, oh, look at them. They so they so cute. Right. Playing together, throwing the ball. Tanner, a good brother. I had a friend, one of those friends that got locked up. And the first thing he said when he came out, he's like, bro, I sat in prison and I watched you on TV. He said, it was no better feeling to know that this is a guy that I watched growing up. Wow. And that I had so much to say about when he pulled his brothers to the side. Yep. He wouldn't come and let them be around us because we was out there shooting dice, smoking, doing all the he other stuff. He knew you always going to make it he out. He never wanted to let them see that. But he would always come around mm -hmm. and want to partake. He said, man, I wish I had a brother like you. And it hurt me. I mean, it, it, it did something to me differently because I was hurt a little bit because I know how many years he missed. Right. Childhood. And sure. now he's, uh, look, I didn't see him until... I'm in my fifth or sixth year as a in pro. The league. And, I, and the last time I saw him was in 10th grade. So to hear him share those words with me, to look back on the things that, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm going to take the credit for it, but I tried. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it happened. You know, I've always envisioned you guys just being better than me. You know what I mean? I, I care less if you play football or not. I wanted you to know that it was a lot out there for us to get in life. Um... My question to you, because I, I watched your career, uh, and I always wondered because I didn't have nobody that I had to shoot for or, sure. or top. Was it pressure being that you was the younger Moss? Or was it, because I understand how you got into college, and it was different from me. I kind of had to scratch and claw to get myself into where I was at. That door was wide open for right, me. Right, right. Was it more added pressure being a younger Moss, or was it basically, you know what, he just gave me an alley hoop. I'm going to take it, you know, from here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see it as pressure at all, playing ball. I mean, a lot of people try to, I guess, put that on me. Like, right. oh, man, you got to be. Because of that last yeah, name. Like, oh, you got to be Santana. You got to do this. You got to do that. Right. And I was like, man, that's my big brother. Right. Most importantly, like, this is my oldest brother. Someone that I saw put in the work and I witnessed day in and day out. Right. Why not do that same exact thing so I can reach the level that he's at right now? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was more, more so motivation for me. To go out every day and say, I seen Tanner do it, I'm finna go do it too. If if he can do it, I can do it. So yeah. it was never any pressure like I had to do everything that he did, right. but I knew if I applied myself in a way that he applied himself, that I will make it to where he made it to. And then I had the opportunity to make it to college. I mean, cause you think about it, we went to Miami Cara City Senior High School. Right. Go Chiefs. Chiefs. Go Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. Cara City Chiefs, CC Zoo. CC Zoo. We did not throw the football right. when I was there. Yeah. Same with you, Same with me. Yeah. We did not throw the football. Crazy. So we ran the football majority of the time, but it had an opportunity where I had to learn to be patient sure. in my life. And you wasn't patient. <laughs> so I'm, it forced in, you. In a way, I was. I yeah. had to mature. Yeah. 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 I had to mature. I remember those talks we had, yeah. man. To be patient. The ball, right. Screw this. Right. Yeah. Not like right. Attitude, exactly. But I had to calm down and, yeah. I, you know, to be humble. So right. it taught yeah. you a lot. It taught me a lot. It taught yeah. me to put things in perspective. Right. You know, because most of us, we go in there with, with individual goals you know, that we want to accomplish as wide receivers, as running backs, whatever. So, you know, you want to get the yards, you want to get the touchdowns, et cetera. But at the end of the day, it's a team effort. Right. So if I do and take care of my responsibility on this team, then my team will win this game. Sure. If I make a block, we'll score a touchdown. If I'm in the right position, we're going to do everything we need to do to excel. So right. it more so wasn't it more about me, it was about my team. I'm going to go back to the career in mm -hmm. a second, but I want to ask you more about acting. When you go on auditions and you get these gigs now, mm -hmm. do you feel like you have to break a stigma that, oh, he's just a, an athlete trying to act? Do you <laughs> feel like that exists? He's far from or that. do they look at you as when you walk in, are you an actor to them? Or do they try and say, oh, he's, he's a ball player trying to act? I mean, surprisingly, man, I, I don't tell anybody what I used to do. No kidding. So they don't know. They Unless have, they do their they due no diligence, clue. they have no they clue. They have no clue. Wow. So, multiple, so multiple times where I have auditioned for different projects right. and I've been you know, fortunate enough to book a lot of things you know, since I've been out there. Right. They won't know until I actually book and I'm on set where they'll do their research and see the name. I'll get the looks like Sonora's Moss. Wow. Like I know that name from somewhere. And I'll just laugh like, yeah, I get that a lot. Jokingly, <laughs> I get that a lot. You know, I, I tell them, yeah, great. I get that a lot because You're I never really. similar with that. I mean, because if, 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 if you think about it, man. Be brothers for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you think that about it. That far. If I throw out that, that big card, if you're playing cards, if sure. I throw out that big card, that trumps everything. Yeah. So if I tell you off the back what it is that I formally did. Right. You're now interested in my life right. for different reasons. Correct. Yeah. But if I walk up in this room and I deliver and I do what I have to do to get this role. And it's believable when you book me for this role. You're now looking at me as an actor. Right. Okay, this 
you know what I mean? Cause they see thousands of people every day. Right. They get thousands of self tapes in, they get thousands of people come in and audition for these roles. Right. So if I come in here and I deliver and do what I need to do to be, you know, to get this role. Right. Now, do your research, do whatever. Now it's like a different respect for me because I never mentioned what I formerly used to do Smart. in order to get this role. Like, I don't want to That's get the role because of what I did. Yeah. I want to get the role because... I can step in here and I can be what you not, can and do, what, what I can do right do. now. You know, so that's what's most important for me. So I never tell anybody what I formerly did. They eventually find out would, along the way. Would you take a role if it, if it's a football player or what's the show like there. a baller yeah. or yeah, something? Yeah, you yeah, would I, do I that. have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've done some things. I did a I did a um, one of my first feature films. Shout out to Matthew Cherry, man. He's a director right now in Hollywood. Um, definitely paving the way. Um, we got. A, I did a film called The Last Fall. Oh, okay. It was like actually was about his life. Yeah. Wow. He was a former professional athlete. He's now a director in, in Hollywood right now. And it starred Lance Gross, um, Nicole Bahari. I was, had the opportunity to play a role in this film. This is like wow. 2012. I was still playing the league then. Wow. Know? It was like yeah. 2011, 2012 when I shot it. Actually, I was playing for the Eagles then when, I, when we shot this film. Damn. I had just joined the Eagles, flew out to L.A. I shot the film. Um, it came out later 2012. And then end up being in a lot of film festivals. But it was basically about his life, his wow. journey of That's jumping dope. from team to team, you know, because he went undrafted. Yeah. Sure. So it was about his life, jumping from team kind to team journeyman. and the struggle mm -hmm. of trying to stick and land on different teams. Mm -hmm. And then having the opportunity now to be in Hollywood now as a former athlete, you know, and his roles come to me all the time. Former guy, former athlete, you know, like wide receiver. Funny enough. You're like perfect. I auditioned for ballers. Let me tell you this come story. Come on. Tell you this story. I auditioned for Ballers in 2012. What? 2012, 2013, before it actually was Ballers. So I got the script. It had no name. It was like a... It was you know, HBO. It was HBO. Okay. I knew who was behind it, but it had no name yet. So I went in. That's crazy. Audition for the main role, which was which is now being played by David Washington. Wow. Denzel Washington's son. son. Yeah. The, uh, Ricky, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Ricky. So the description of the character was wide receiver. Christian following. <laughs> so they coming to me like, yeah, yeah, you can definitely play this role. I went in, I auditioned for it back in 2012, like I said. Too. I did really well. Got a call back for it. But eventually after that, I was still playing. It went, it went away from me. Right. I didn't know what took place. Right. Then finally the show came out. But I'm like, yo, that's the show that I, that's that I auditioned crazy. for. That's crazy. You yeah. could have been Ricky. Yeah. So wow. that's the show that I auditioned for. Yeah. That's crazy because I didn't even know that. But tell me something. Since we on acting and stuff, um, we shared a couple of stories of the night and I told you. I shared with you how when I met Travis and um, being in this new, uh, I guess you call it world yeah. when it comes to the media it's a whole side, new world. Yeah, um, it is. Travis was a guy that, it was like, it was like something, you know how when something just like, kind of like hits you and you like, man, he deserves more. And I've been that guy, I, tra I shared with you as a player, mm -hmm. when guys used to join the team or work out, for talent. I just had an eye for it. I had that, that niche that yeah. if somebody was good enough or talented enough, see it. I see it. Travis, I joined joined NBC Sports at the time. It was Comcast yep. Network, yep. and um, I meet Travis. The connection, how he vibed. Day I don't one. know if Travis. I don't know if Travis just knew me from some other, you know, you know, world right. or life, you know. Yeah. But he, we just bonded. Yep. And I'm like, we doing stuff in front of the camera, but he's like, Nah, I'm the. I'm producing this. Yep. I'm, you know. I created I'm, the I'm, show yeah, we met on. He created one of the shows I was yeah. on. I'm like, bro, you need to be in front of the camera, and see him now he's yeah. in front of the camera like you can't get him off the camera he's right. one of the best that we have yeah, on NBC definitely. sports you know what we talked about last night about you being a guy that you know you want to be in front of the camera but when you're not in front of the camera you're 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 partaking in things behind the scenes, behind the scenes yep. you're yep. part of the you know the crew yeah. that gets no love that gets no recognition yeah, gets no recognition how important that is for a guy like yourself to know both both sides um i think it's very important man it was something that was introduced to me the very first week I got into actually to be in L.A. So this is like around like 2014. I finally like officially moved there. And um, I ended up being on a set. A few friends, they were shooting like a film. And I'm on set and they wanted me to do, you know, they wanted me to come in and play like this little role and help out. I ended up meeting this DP who was actually a part of the set. He was actually gaffing. This is a term. He's a gaffer um, for, um, for this particular film. Right. We ended up chopping it up talking on the side lunch break and to find out he's a director of photography so he's the dp of a wow. lot of other films so we talk and he's like asking me what i want to do i was like man you know i want to act man you know 
Come to find out, he found out exactly who I am. Wow. Goes crazy. It on. <laughs> we, we build a bond. He's a huge Saints fan. He's from New Orleans. Who that? Keith Smith, that's his name. He's yeah. a DP. And we end up, he tells me, hey, if you want to know the business, I got you. I'm going to give you a call in a few weeks. And a lot of times you hear that from different what? people and you never receive a phone call. Right. He called me literally like a week later. was like, hey, I'm shooting this, I'm shooting this film. I need you to come on. I'm like, okay, cool. I get there. He puts me in the fire. I'm like, now I'm pushing a dolly. I don't know if many people know what a dolly is. Uh-huh. A dolly is connected sometimes to the camera. And that's how you get some of those shots. zoom in yeah. shots when you zoom in and you get these shots in these Great movies. Cinematography. So it's someone that's actually pushing this dolly right. to get this shot. Right. So you got to be in sync with yeah. the dolly yep. and, the, and the DP. You got to be on point. You got to wow. be on point. So he, he threw me in the fire. I learned from him. Every time he went in, he would call me in more and more. So now I'm working crew. I'm doing Best Boy Electric. I'm doing grip. I'm doing gas. Smart. And I'm learning behind the scenes, which ultimately helped me in front of the camera. Because I now know what lenses they're using now. They get the close-up shots. I know what a, you know, what a master shot is. Yep. I'm basically learning on the go. Yep. I didn't need to go to school. Yeah. I'm learning on the go about wow. how to perform so in front of the camera. So what you're doing, go to school for this. Actually go to school for this. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell wow. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. people that go to school to be gaffers, wow. yep. to be grips, to be best boy electric. Places like a NYU, yeah. USC. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, there's this. big film schools yeah. that, that do this. So but schools that's just like being a guy. But see... Coming from your background, mm-hmm. being a professional ball player, just being a, a football player all your life, sometimes we put in those situations. Yeah. yeah. You got to learn to go. You got to learn yeah, to go. It's, 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 That's no true. time to wait. Yeah. Your athletic ability sometimes is going to allow you to say, look, for all the flaws I have, sure. this is going to make up for it. So, you know, it's probably, you know, one of the things that guys like us coming from our industry, right. I can say, you know what I'm saying? Because we're yeah. not in that industry. Right. We're not in that John world work. You know, we're able to, you know, achieve a little different because, you know, we have a different mindset when it comes to accomplishing our goal. Here's what we need to do. It's a new honorary Moss Brother. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a Moss Brother biopic is yeah. what needs to happen. Yeah, it, it should be. That'll be sweet, That man. Is a movie. That'd be sweet. Like the Black Mannings. Yeah. <laughs> that never sweet. get no credit. That never get the credit. That never get no credit. <laughs> like I said, the Black Mannings. We don't, you need, it. we don't need it. We don't need it, bro. Okay. We, don't we don't want it. We don't need it. Hey, man. You know, that's, that's one thing about us, man. Like, I mean, as you as you know, you guys, like we we never boast or brag about what it right. is that we do, man. Hey, y'all work speaks for and, itself, yeah. though. I, I, and with anything, I don't. We shouldn't have to tell. That's why I don't tell a lot of people what I did. Yeah. Because, like you said, your work speaks for what, sure. what you've done. So I don't have to walk in a room and tell somebody I'm working out. Right. You will see you that see I'm it. physically, That's right. I work out. Same with him. I don't have to tell anybody that I'm yep. doing X, Y, and Z because you will physically see whether That's on right. TV, commercially, yep. whatever you, you will see that yourself. I'm doing. Yeah. So I don't That's have a to, fact. So, but I think it was something that we learned from like our parents too, yeah. man. Like, cause Bingo. my mom. Bingo. I was hoping you got to them. My, my mom. I was hoping you got to them. It's the most humblest human being wow. ever yeah. when it comes to having kids accomplish what we've been able to accomplish yeah. coming from where we come from. Right. And seeing her, how she maneuver and do things in life. It was like, my mama never mentioned a word about what we do. Me and Santana. Yeah. Right. That's or Lloyd crazy. and what we were doing yeah. and growing up. And she could easily and She could brag. easily say, oh yeah, yeah. my and boys are doing X, Y, and Z. So. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. She yeah. never did that. So but she knew, she knew growing up and I don't mean to cut you off, bro, because no, I mean, I wanted him to get to them. She knew growing up we were special. Yeah. Not to say we're going to be famous or nothing right. like that. She just had some kids that she understood that it's a lot going on in our life. Sure. In, in our world. We see it every day. I remember nights, and I'm, I'm not sure if you remember these nights, mom and dad working. It's New Year's Eve. What are we doing? We on the floor in the house. Wow. Because the gunshots is ringing from outside our, wow. our, you know, our windows. We get up in the morning, the damn stop sign is shredded. Like, yeah, cottage shredded. cheese. You know what I'm saying? Woo. And I'm saying, like, Man, like, this is where we live. This is life. Right. So having somebody that working, grinding, as kids, you just sit back and watch. Yeah, I ain't complaining. I ain't, right. You know, you sit back Coming and watch, home, like, right. man. Cooking, working. Right. You know, you look over that, you look yeah, over man. your head, like, ain't no leaks. Right. We good. You don't have a silver we spoon, but you had everything you needed. Bro, everything we needed. Everything so we ever needed. you take needed, on the same had. persona as, you know what I mean, that same kind of whatever your mom and dad is yeah. instilling in you. Yeah. It's you. It's you now, so you're not looking for more. Yeah. Get, let me work. Yeah. Let me just give me the opportunity. Yeah, let me let me earn yeah. it. You know, let me earn it. Let me earn and it. And at the end of the day, when the opportunity presents itself, it wasn't because we were just 
you know, I, I, I hear so many guys, man, and, I, and that's one of the things that I have that I kind of hate when I bump into guys that I grew up with. It's always like, man, if I would have got that opportunity. No, you had it. We all had the opportunities. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. decide to do something else. That's right. You know? You got to take responsibility. And I just shared with him what I, you know, I wrote to a kid on Instagram. That's, that's one of the things about me. Uh, I tried to be one of those guys. If I see a kid doing this thing, and whether I know him or not, if he tagged me, one of these kids keep tagging me in his videos, I know him. I know his father. And I wrote to him, one of the uh, great quotes from my high school coach. He said, opportunity favors the most prepared. Wow. That's something that's st stuck with me to this, to this day. day. Like, I told myself, regardless of what they doing with me, I'm going to be ready. Wow. Because when I get that call, they're going to be like, well, what the hell we was doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. I heard Cole Frazier tell me these stories about me when I was, a, you know, in college. Every high school coach called him and say, man, you had Santana Moss for four years and you ain't do that with him? <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, I had a bunch of Santana Mosses. So Damn. what you want me to do with him? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what, the, one of the things I've learned by being on that team with Coach Fred, like he told you, we didn't throw the ball off. Right. Ball, but when man. he threw it, you better make a play. He, I remember you said he told you, be ready. You better Listen, be ready. Coming and at so, you. you know, it, it's just like one of those situations. So that's life all over. So right. you're done. You know, we both retired now. Yeah. And people sit there and try to applaud us for, man, y'all you, you, still going. I still right. your name. It's not because it's supposed to be like this. No, it's just because that's what I know. That's what you know. That's how y'all are wired. I'm not going to sit wired, still yeah. because my mom and dad showed me to this day. Right. They're about to retire together, man. Yeah. Wow. Next year, 20, 2020, 2020, 2020 yeah. my mom and dad is ready to retire, retire. together. Hey, yeah. I want to come to the retirement <laughs> yeah. party, bro. You know? yeah. And it's like, that's it's gonna crazy. Be a party. It's, it's a blessing, man. man, because even when we both was playing ball, yeah. they never asked to retire me. Right. right, you know, most right. parents think that man, I raised these two guys to be right. where they at. Right. It's time to retire. Right. No, that's what they. My, I heard my mama tell me this time and time again. Man, I'm so happy to see what y'all. That's y'all. Yeah, y'all doing what y'all was meant to do. You know, I'm I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Right. Woo. You know, I'm not gonna sit down and deteriorate yeah. now because y'all making my, a lot of money. No, that ain't how it goes. And that's why I appreciate them. So I was glad that he yeah. brought them up. Yeah. I got a question. Mm -hmm. You know, a question for you. Um, me and Travis talk so much about uh, my childhood and things that I remember. What's your most fondest memory of a child? You know, you know our, ch our childhood, but your, your childhood <laughs> memories. So many, man. Um, <laughs> something that just sticks That's out. That's a blessing. Some, something that me and you probably never, we, pro we, bar we barely share these talks anyway, so something that just sticks out that you can remember. Nori, that, some you know, people cringe I, when they I hear guess, childhood. I'll, you said I'll there's you, so many. That's a good thing. I'll tell you one thing my dad used to do, man. My dad used to work for Florida Power and Light. <laughs> Back in black in Miami, and he used to read meters. Yeah. So by him being able to read meters, he would travel all throughout Miami. Wow. I mean, he would be in Miami Beach, Miami right. Dade, whatever, you know, Miami County. Right. So he would always gather us in our car, our great Oldsmobile that we had. Yep. My mom, my three brothers, myself, and Santana and Lloyd, and we would drive to all these areas. You see so the houses. When we were when we were younger, my dad gave us these visions that we can possibly obtain these things. So let me tell you what he used to do. So we used to drive to Coconut Grove. It's crazy. We used to drive to all of these areas with all these huge homes. And he was like, yeah, I, I read meters there. Mm. I read meters over here. I read meters over there. So we now in the back seat, like, that's going to be my house. Wow. That's going to be my car. Calling it. That's going to be my car. No, 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 that's my car. No, 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 that's mine. <laughs> arguing. Like, so, so if you think about that. My dad probably didn't realize what he was doing, right. but he was giving us that vision yes, to say right, that right. if we work that hard, we can obtain these things. Insane, it's possible bro. for us. Do you know that's one of my most bro. fondest memories also? One of my most fondest memories. I just shared, I shared this I, I love numerous it. times about that's my crazy. father yeah, that what it. he put into us. That's crazy. I love it. Because you, that was not to cut you off. That was now giving us an opportunity to what you speak and believe that like you can obtain. It. You yeah. can visualize it, that you oh, can't obtain man, it. Because even now to this day, I still do that with myself and also with my son. I mean, because I see things now that I want or I envision, and I say, you know what, I'm gonna get that. Wow. And I work hard to get to that particular point, you know. Yeah. So I appreciate my parents for it that. It was man. like a vision board. That's yeah. crazy. In the, yeah. in the flesh. Yeah. Really. That's, that's insane that he has the same. Like that's yeah. one of the minds that stick yeah. out the most. It worked. That's, that's, that's one of the minds that stick out the most. That's a beautiful thing. It worked. Like, that was like the first thing that I thought about when I made it. Like, yeah. Guys thinking about, boy, I'm gonna have this car. Right. On this jury, and I was like, nah, I'm gonna get my daddy this car, and my mom. And when they say what house that's they want, we gonna get it. That's, that's crazy. all I cared about because that's what I remember growing up. You right, know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. Like, 
that's crazy, yeah, man. Bro. That's <laughs> it worked, man. We're wired to say yeah, like, that's crazy. Like I said, it's, it's so many though. Yeah. Like, right. you know, so that's one with all of us together. Yeah, that's 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 six out, right? More than anything. Senior, yeah, right? Lloyd yeah, yeah, yeah. Lloyd Lloyd Senior, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, man. Lloyd and Allie Moss, man. We love y'all. So yeah. I imagine you keep your eyes on the Giants, right? From time because to time, yeah, I do. To me, I almost feel like them and the Skins are in the same boat, right? Yeah. It's a it's a rebuild. It's young quarterbacks. Hell, Daniel Jones was taken right before Haskins anyway. So those two are tied at the hip the rest of their career, whether they want to be or not. When you see the Giants, what do you see now? Um, I see a rebuilding. I feel like they're rebuilding. Um, I don't agree with what's going on and what's taking place with Eli. Uh, maybe I'm being biased because that was my quarterback and uh, what he's been able to accomplish for the New York football Giants and win two Super Bowls and MVP as, as well in his career. But I feel like right now with them having a Daniel Jones, that's his name, correct? Yep. Um, it's now forced into like, we have to see what this young man could do for us. Right. And I'm not, they're not willing to wait a year. We need to have him do what he needs to do now so we can see what our future holds. Um, is it fair to Eli? I don't believe so it is, but that's a part of the game and that's a part of the business, which yeah, we, we all know. We you know which we all that. know, that's a part of the business. So, but I definitely do follow them closely, man, and, and wish them all, all the best, man, but they're definitely in a rebuilding process, for sure. What do you see when you see the Redskins? Um, I don't see the Red, Redskins much. Um, I don't get, actually get an opportunity to see the you Redskins much. You ain't missing much. too much right now. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I watch you scratch your head. Like, I, you know, mean, I mean, I, I, would, I honestly did support and watch the Redskins sure. when my brother was there. That was, the main, that was the main reason I watched the Redskins. But right now, I don't really too, too much follow the Redskins yeah, much. Yeah. yeah, he ain't missing anything, yeah, he ain't missing, yeah. Tana. He missing a whole lot, but, you know, you know, he just spoke about some things that, you know, we having those problems here is beyond problems because we've been seeing these too many times, yeah. year after year after year, and now you're in a situation where it, it need to be a culture shock. You know, yeah. you, you got to zap that thing. You know, I mean, find find a battery, get some something, and hook it up to it, and just clear. You, just, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You clear. Know, huh, give it one of those things. I got I got something for you though. I mean, but we we all know both being in the locker room, right? Yeah. Having an understanding, like, when you build that camaraderie amongst the players yep. and what you do, it's no longer about the coaches. Yeah. Right. I mean, a lot of times people try to point the finger like, it's the coaches. The coaches did this, the coaches did that. As, as players, it's up to us to go on the field and perform and right. execute and do everything we need to do to, to win the football game. Right. My second year, the year that we did go to the, to, the, to the Super Bowl, that we won the Super Bowl, it came to a, to a point where we all came together as a team and was like, we need to do something. We need to change the attitude that's going on right now. And once we did that, man, yeah. we went on a roll. But that's, that's similar to what we did in college. I mean, the I'm same. not sure how your, yeah. your years was there, but that's similar. Like how I, same. Same I thing. just shared on the, um, you know, the Porter's 26 Minutes show. Me, him, and Cooley got a chance to sit back and talk about culture. We got a chance to talk about, you know, LeVar Arrington and how he spoke about the team. Uh, you know, Ryan Clark and what he had, you know, the words that he had. And... I kind of, you know, both of those guys are good friends of mine, so uh, I was very, you know, careful with what I said because, right. you know, one of the things I'm always, I'm going to speak the truth, but I'm going to make sure I'm positive when I speak it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, never here to belittle somebody. You don't attack. So, and it, you're, yeah, you're never not, personal. Never trying to yeah. do that. And LeVar Arrington, whatever he experienced, that's what he experienced. Yeah. So I couldn't really chime in on the way he saw things. But, you know, I wouldn't agree with what he said because I'd never experienced it. You know what I mean? I didn't experience the having to call Mr. Snyder, Mr. Snyder, because guess what? I was going to call you Mr. Snyder anyway because right. that's how I was taught right. as a child. Respect. You know, respect for my elders, right. Mr. Snyder. And guess what? He didn't like that. He want, called me Dan. Called me Dan. And I didn't want to call him Dan, so I did Mr. Snyder, what's up? You know, yep. keep it moving. Yep. You know? <laughs> and so when I heard those things, I feel you. That's what you experienced. Ryan Clark talked about the culture and talked about – Bruce Allen being a liar. Right. You know, hey, you're a liar. The culture is not good. Oh, uh, I could take both sides. One, the culture, I've been talking about the culture. You have to change it. Right. So it's not terrible, but it's not good. But the numbers are the numbers. But when it comes to the guys that's there, right. they can they can change they things. Can change and it has yeah. to be changed. What Sonoris just talked about right. in that locker room. Gotta be right. an attitude. It gotta be a players. guy or two to say, look here, man. We're gonna do X, Y, and Z. Right. If you on board, come on. If you're not, we're gonna weed you out. Right. Exactly. Right. In college, I came to University of Miami in 1997, and that year we was five and six. Before we was five and six, we had to get our hair shaved. Every freshman group come in school, yeah. got to get haircuts. Yeah. We knew it. 
The guys told us, if you're going to ball y'all heads, we're going to haze y'all, blase, blase, blase. You knew it was coming. It was a part of it. It was coming. It was a part of it. We knew it was coming. Unfortunately, something broke out that no one expected. Uh Uh-oh. We in there, the lights cut off, and guys getting nameplates from the lockers, and they spanking players. Uh Uh-oh. And I got hit wrong, you know? I get up. When the lights came on, I was like 10 feet away from where I got hit at. And my back felt like it was in my front, like a dude, a dude, a big lineman caved my back in almost, you know? And I remember it vividly because, like, I was frightened by this guy, just looking at him, 18 years old, this big old dude has hit me. Right. But all I know is fight. Right. All I know is you got to defend yourself now. And he's sitting there like, but he was mad. He had a vendetta with me from day one because one of the linebacker guys grew up with me. Rod Mack and another linebacker grew up with me. Went to high, I mean, went to elementary school with me and um, Nate, Webster. Nate Webster. So they had so much love for me and was putting me in so many different he was places. Jealous. He was jealous. jealous, and he did that to punk me. And little did he know, he wasn't no punk over here. Right. <laughs> so we, he rushed me unexpectedly. I he done came my back in, bro. I don't want right. no fight. I don't want no smoke. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm thinking about what I should do next. Hurting, right. But by him attacking me, I got in attack mode. You and I defended no myself. Yeah. When they got me off him, I was on top of him. <laughs> trying to beat his head in. No, honestly, true story. And Coach, Coach Bush Davis walked in on it. Oh. Everybody upstairs now. Everybody like, did you just see this young kid go off on this dude? I don't want no hazing. It stops today. It stopped. Guess what? This class don't even have to cut their hair. So I hadn't even had my hair cut yet. We walked out of that meeting. Everybody looked at me as like, bro, you just showed us something that we can, we can believe in you. Wow. But we got back to them dorms as freshmen and said, look here, man. It ain't no difference in what's been going on here. We're going to shave our heads. Tomorrow we're going to show up on picture day with bald heads because Ooh. it's a tradition. And guess what? We're going to be the class that changed this. Wow. We stamped that. That was culture. We stamped it. And we came back the next day. What up, ball heads, and them guys bowed to us. Man, look here, man. Respect. They special. Respect. Guess what? That was, the, that was the first class that played the most freshmen ever as true freshmen. I was a walk-on and played as a true freshman. So that lets you know what we had. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So from there, we built. Guess what? My senior year, we supposed to be in the national championship. Yeah. We, had to play as, we had to play for a co-title against Florida State. Florida State I played remember. Oklahoma yeah. we played like Florida, Florida yeah. to be co-champs. They didn't right. allow us in because yeah. the BCS poll junk right. came about. Right. The next year, back-to-back, they went to championships. That was our class changing the culture. When I look at the Redskins, they need a group to change the culture, yeah. and it has to start with the players. So yeah. I feel what he's saying, and that's why that's you know I speak, and that's why I believe in what Ryan is saying is that you have to have a group of guys form a bond and say this is what we got to do. And if you're not a part of this, we're going to find a way to weed you out. Yeah. I want to end it with this. What would have happened if Sonoris and Santana played on the Redskins together? We tried to Woo! get that done, right? Yeah, well, that yeah, was yeah, what, was, 2000, um, 2011 or 10? 2012, I think. When oh, was probably, it? No, it's probably 2011. 2011. Yeah, I just it was 11. cannot. Yeah, 2011. Nori came, came in on a visit. I came in on a visit. Let me speak because I was mad. <laughs> came I in on a mad. visit. I was mad. Why I was were you pissed off? Why were you mad? Because, look. You probably recruited. I was pissed, I was pissed because <laughs> he didn't understand what. Nori knew growing <laughs> up. Nori knew, and I, and no, he told me what happened, so yeah, I understood yeah, that yeah, after yeah. what what happened. But growing up, that's who I always wanted to play with my my younger of brother. Like I, when 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 you had to ask me, my clone, he was like yeah. a clone of mine. Yeah, he didn't see it that way, but I always saw it that way. Like man, this me, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like he can do everything I could do and more. I always thought he was faster. You know, I always thought he was more explosive. Right. But that's just me looking at my younger brothers and wanting them to be better, too, probably. But Dan Snyder called me up and said, I'm bringing your brother in for a visit. Make it happen. So he said, look, Tanner, I don't know how many more years you got. At that time, I still had four or five more years. And he said, but just think what we can do with him, what we did with you. But y'all both on the field. I'm like, Dan, I'm going to make it happen. Wow. And so me and Nuri, we, Nuri came. I talked to him probably briefly, not even that much about yeah, what was, was going on. Because brief, it's a yeah. different world when it comes to yeah. contracts, yeah. what you want, what you're looking for, right. and the guarantees, all that stuff. So and I you only have but so much control anyway. Yeah. You've exactly. kind of done your part. So yeah. only I could do is just show him a good time. Right. Look, man, we're going to go out to eat. We right. go, it was a Thursday, I believe, because we all yeah. went to Hooters. Yeah. You know, that was some of yeah. the things we did mm-hmm. back in my day. That's one of the reasons why our culture was a little different. Right. We bonded on certain right. nights. So Thursday night was the receiver's night. We right. go to Hooters and Chantilly. We're going to eat, break right. bread together. You go right. home, you go to the club. You do whatever you want to do, but we're going to sit down and talk about this game and bond on a different level. Right. And Nori came out with the fellas, and we just didn't know what was going to transpire, but eventually we found out the next day that he said no. You know what I mean? But 
uh, Dan had high hopes because Dan wanted to see him be me. Wow. Dan really thought that Nori didn't have the opportunities in New York to, to, to really do what he, he, he can do in this league. And right. I thought the same thing. He didn't. He asked me, he what is it going, what's yeah. going on in New York? Right. I said, I don't know. What was it? It was politics, you know? right? It, it was definitely politics. Yeah, I mean, because when I got drafted, um, Ernie Acorsi was the one who actually oh, drafted yeah. me. Yep. So Ernie Acorsi drafted me, um, and then we ended up having Coast, uh, Coast Tough. He ended up leaving in the middle of, of my oh. year that I, got, that I was there. Okay. He wasn't doing so well my first year when I got to the Giants. Right. We was a team fully loaded with a whole bunch of veterans, right. amazing veterans. Right. Um, but we didn't have a, a good season at all. Um, so, like, mid-season, I think, fired the OC, Ernie Corsi resigned. So now they're bringing a whole new wave of GMs, offensive coordinators. And then from there, it went to they're getting the guys who they wanted. Yeah. So wow. I basically was – trying to fight upstream the entire my entire career there but I made sure that I did what I needed to do every day right you know had a great attitude about coming to work I had fun I did what I needed to do when I, my opportunities came I made plays but it was definitely politics man and then of course you know injuries played a played a big factor yeah, you got well, so the then ultimately yeah, what man. happened here that you decided it just wasn't the right fit um well the Eagles the Eagles offered a little more. The yeah. Eagles offered a little more. It's business. Yeah, the Eagles offered a little more. But to tell you a story, man, the Eagles actually was looking to actually draft me when I came out. That was like one of the teams that really wanted me when I came out in the draft in 2006. Wow. As well. So for it to come full circle around like that it's to now how many teams have the opportunity to the yeah. you know, yeah. have the opportunity to be like, hey, you're available now. Wow. Hey, we, we want you and we want to give you X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, with the with Michael Vick being there and right. <laughs> Young. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? Yeah, I mean, Eagles, Redskins. I mean, right. that's a no-brainer. Right, Eagles. right. Damn, I still can dream now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, it, it, I, mean I definitely, I definitely Yo, could. Yeah, that would have been beautiful, been though, man, if it did. Yeah, that would have been beautiful, man. Oh, really my had. God. Really All right, would've. Tanner, before we leave, I got to tell him about this giveaway. BMW of Sterling is collaborating with 89 Ways to Give. We're raffling tickets for $50. 15 goes to 89 Ways to Give. Meet Mr. Moorhead. Mr. Moorhead, where are you? Let me see your hand. Give it up for Mr. Moorhead. Yeah. If you want to get tickets, go see him. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win a brand-new BMW. Carmen, it's blue, right? It's that blue one. That is a beautiful car. If, if I'm going to buy Mr. 20 Moorhead, $50 if you, if raffle I could tickets just for that shine BMW. For you, I can I can knock that out for you, <laughs> Sonoris. It is an hey, absolute Thank honor you, and pleasure, a pleasure. Hey, this might have been our best show, honestly. Yeah, honestly, I'd also know, like I'm to thank the Moss family for adopting me. Yeah. I am very happy to be a Moss. <laughs> Mama, now. if you ain't want another son, you got one. <laughs> got one. My mom always wanted a girl, so Santana she, she Moss probably be show pissed with that. Matchbox, yeah, make yeah. some noise. It's a Santana Moss show. Every single week is a lyrical fact.